let's think about the directional derivative again. Remember we said that the directional derivative, we wrote this notation, the directional derivative of f in the direction of some unit vector u would be equal to the gradient of f dotted with u. So since this was a dot product, what we got was um, the length of the first vector times the length of the second vector, which is supposed to be a unit vector, times the cosine of the angle in between them. Now, that tells us a lot about the directional derivative because we said, well, you could make this cosine as big as possible by making the angle between the two vectors zero, right? So um, just looking at this formula, it tells us that if the direction we go in is aligned with the gradient, so it, we go in the direction of the gradient, but it needs to be a unit vector, so we divide by its length. So if we go in the direction of the gradient, though, um, then we get we get our steepest possible value, our biggest possible value for the slope in that particular direction, right? We say if you go in the direction of the gradient, you get steepest ascent. Also, we could make cosine to be negative one. That would be the most negative value you could get out of this thing, right? Um, since you can't control what the gradient of f is, that's given to you as the function. So if all you can control is the direction you go, then all you can change is this, right? You could make this negative one. So by making the angle 90 degrees. In other words, if you go in the opposite direction to the gradient, now we have to divide by the length of the gradient because it's supposed to be a unit vector for our direction. In that direction, we get steepest descent. OK. Um, and here's another thing to notice. As long as, So you can go in any direction as long as the cosine of theta is um, greater than zero, you will see some increase, right? So as long as you head in a direction where the cosine of the angle between the direction you're heading and the gradient is um, a positive number, right, there will be some increase. Okay, so we're saying, um, suppose we have some function, just let's say it's a function of, of two variables, maybe a function like this, f of x, y equals x times y. Okay, so we can look at it in input space now. Right? We're, we're somewhere in the x, y plane, and for each point in the x, y plane, there's a value of f. Now, at that point, the gradient of f will point in the direction of steepest ascent. So let's say the gradient for this function happens to point in this way, this direction. So here's, here's the gradient of f. Now, you might, from that point, you might head out in any direction. And you could ask, well, what's the slope if, say, I head out in this direction? So maybe I'm going to go in the direction of this unit vector u. Well, because the angle here is um, less than 90, that means the cosine is going to be positive. And so you know if you go in that direction, that you're going to get um, some increase in the value of f if, as you start to head off in that direction since you are um, since the cosine of the angle between the direction you're heading and the gradient of f is um, less than 90 the cosine is going to be positive that means that the directional derivative which is gradient of f dot u or the length of gradient of f times the cosine of the angle between them that's going to have to be a positive number you'll get some increase on the other hand if you decide to head off in some other direction Let's say you head off maybe in, um, in this direction, v. Now, the angle between the gradient of f and the direction you're heading is more than 90 degree degrees. And so the cosine is negative, right? Which means you're going to have some decrease. So if the cosine of theta is less than 0, there will be at least some decrease in that direction. OK. And if I have to go, um, if I go perpendicular, right, then I'll be going along the level set. So if the cosine of theta is equal to 0, right? So if the angle between the direction I'm heading and 
um, and the direction of the gradient is 90 degrees, right? That would mean that the angle that is 90 is 90 degrees or pi halves, since we are usually use radians in calculus. So if the cosine of the angle is equal to zero, you'll be on a level set, so there won't be any increase or decrease as you initially start off in that direction. This is important when we think about having um, having to optimize something where there's a constraint. Let me show you how. Suppose we have um, some function which depends on our position in the plane here, and we want to optimize it. We want to find the maximum or minimum value of that function, but we have to also at that same time satisfy the constraint. That's a pretty typical situation, right? So your boss says, I want you to make the most money, um, but you can only use this much money for advertisement, right? Or I want you to um, build this product so that um, it's as large as possible, but you can't go over this particular cost. Or build me the fastest racing car for under a million dollars. Okay, so you have something that you want to optimize, right? And you have some constraints that you have to work within. Now, if we think about that constraint, let's look in our input space here in, in XY, in the XY plane in this case. The constraint, you have, you have one uh, constraint on uh, two freedoms, X and Y, and so that's going to be a one-dimensional object within two-dimensional space. This is just going to be a level curve, right? So we're going to have some curve. That's our constraint. Who knows what that curve looks like? This is the constraint that these are all the inputs to the function g, where the output is some given constant c. So we have to we have to stay on this line in order to to um, um, satisfy our constraint. And then we have some other function f here, and at each point we have um, the gradient of f. And I haven't specified what f is, so who knows what direction the gradient is? But let's just say maybe the gradient of f is pointing this direction, say, at this particular point. But at other points, the gradient could be pointing in different directions, right? But we know the gradient tells us the direction of steepest descent. So now, let's think about we're on this curve. Let's suppose at this point, the gradient of f looks like this. Now, it's not possible to actually move in the direction of the gradient of f, right? Because the gradient of f is, would carry you off of your constraint curve. You can't leave that curve because you've got to satisfy those constraints. But it is possible to go tangent to the curve here, right? Because you can move tangent to the curve, and as you just make, if you make a tiny step tangent, then you'll stay on the curve. So if you go a long ways in that direction, probably the curve will bend away from you. But initially, if you go tangent to the curve, then you can do that. So as long as, as, long as the angle between the tangent to the curve and the gradient of f is um, less than 90 degrees, then I can get some increase. Also, you can see because of the orientation of the gradient, if I go the other tangent, the other direction, the other tangent of the curve, the angle this way is more than 90 degrees, so the cosine will be negative, so we'll have decreasing slope for f in that direction. Here's the thing, as long as you can move in a direction that's at least partially aligned with the gradient, you can get increase. So you can see you, you, would, you would move over here a little bit, and then you could check the gradient again. Maybe the gradient hasn't moved that much. Maybe it's about, about the same value here. Then you can keep moving. But let's say we get to this point, and we find a situation where the gradient looks like this. Now, we don't know what the function f is, so I'm just saying, well, perhaps the gradient might look like that. Suppose we're in a scenario here where the gradient of f looks like that. And let's say that it's actually perpendicular to the level sets. In other words, the, the tangent direction is um, the direction you could move to stay on the curve, the tangent direction is actually perpendicular to the gradient. Now you know that the direction at, at that particular point, right, the directional derivative of f in this direction u that's tangent to the curve would be the gradient of f dot u. And if those are perpendicular, that gradient or that dot product is zero. So you can't get any increase. You must have reached a point where f is optimal. Well, you may have reached a point that f is optimal. Certainly, if you have reached a point where f is optimal, then you can't, you can't move from that point and go any higher or any lower at that, at that particular, um, <clears throat> any higher or any lower. Depends on whether you're, opt you're maximizing or minimizing, right? When you get to that optimal point, that is going to be the case. So at the optimal point, moving along the 
tangent direction. to the level set G, will be perpendicular. Not perpendicular to the gradient of F. And now, <clears throat> if the tangent to the level sets of your constraint function G is perpendicular to the gradient of F, is is perpendicular to the gradient of f. Well, the gradient of g, that is perpendicular to the level sets of g, right? So the only way the, the tangent direction of the level sets of g could be perpendicular to gradient f would be if the gradient of g right, was aligned with the gradient of f. So in other words, the gradient of f is just some scalar multiple. I'll just use the Greek letter lambda, it's an L, times the gradient of g. So if that's the case, if the gradient of f is a scalar multiple of the gradient of g, now we know we're at a situation where the two gradients are aligned. So to try to, to move along the level set, you've, you've got to go perpendicular to the gradient of g, which means you can only go perpendicular to f, which means that the directional derivative will be zero. You can't get any increase or decrease. So having the gradient of the function you're trying to optimize be aligned with the gradient of the constraint function is the condition for um, having a max or a min.